Okay, so in today's lesson, we're going to look at adding and subtracting algebraic fractions. Now, we have met adding and subtracting fractions before, so this is really the only new part that we're going to bring into it. We'll remind ourselves of adding and subtracting fractions. I'm going to give you an example here. Um, one third plus two sixths. Okay, and hopefully you'll remember that you actually can't add fractions if they have a different denominator or a different number on the bottom. So if you remember back to first year and you remember back to primary school, how we solved this was we got a common denominator so that that would help us have the same number on the bottom and we could then add or subtract the fractions as required. So the common denominator is still really important here. We're going to be adding and subtracting fractions, uh, but we're also going to have some algebra terms in there, some algebraic terms. So we could have something like this. 2x divided by 3 plus 4 plus 2x all over 7. Okay, and so you'll spot that there's algebra up here, but yet we still have fractions. And when we have fractions, we must almost always find a common denominator. Okay, so we'll have a look at example one. Okay, so the first example we have here is express in its simplest form, or simplify the following. 3a minus 1, and that line there means divided by 4, minus 5a plus 4 divided by 3, plus 2a minus 7 divided by 6. And what each one of these is, is they are each fractions, and with the fractions we can see unknowns or variables, and so we call these algebraic fractions. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing as I did back in primary school. If I asked you to add 1 half plus 1 third, you would say to me, Miss, you can't do it because they don't have the same denominator. So we're going to do the same thing as we would have back then. We're going to find a common denominator for the denominators 4, 3 and 6. Okay, so hopefully we're good enough at our multiples to spot that the common denominator between 4, 3 and 6, the first number that they all go into here is 12. So I'm going to now place a big long line across and I'm going to write 12 on the bottom. Okay, so now I'm going to figure out how many times 4 goes into 12, and 4 goes into 12 three times. So I will have 3 bracket whatever else is on top, so it's this bit here, so it's 3 bracket 3a minus 1. Close the bracket, and then I must remember I have a minus here, so I'm going to place a minus here. And then I ask my question, my question well how many times does 3 go into 12, and it goes 4 times. So it'll be 4 times whatever else is on top, 5a plus 4. And then if I look to the next sign, the next sign is a plus, so I make sure I write that down. I have to make this line a bit longer. And 6 goes into 12 twice, so it'll be 2 times whatever is on top of the fraction, which in this case is 2a minus 7. So hopefully now that you've done that, you're actually seeing the next step. And the next step is to work out the brackets or to tidy this bit up. We know that whenever we see brackets, it does mean multiplication. And so what I'm doing here is I'm going to be working out these brackets. So on the bottom line, I will still have my 12. That's not going to change. But I'm going to work out the top line here. So 3 times 3a gives me 9a. And 3 times minus 1 gives me minus 3. Okay. The next one is minus 4 times 5a. So minus 4 times 5a gives me minus 20a. And minus 4 times plus 4 gives me minus 16. And the next one is 2 times 2a gives me 4a, so plus 4a. And plus 2 times minus 7, a plus by a minus gives me a minus, and two 7s are 14. 
Okay, so on the top here, my answer is 9a minus 3 minus 20a minus 16 plus 4a minus 14. And so our next step is, once we've worked out the brackets, our next step here would be to simplify. Okay, so I've just written this step two here. Work out any brackets and simplify the top line. So we've worked out the brackets, we're now going to simplify this, which is essentially grouping. We're going to group all of the algebra together. So we're going to group the 9a, the minus 20a, and the plus 4a. So we're going to bring them together. And then we're going to bring the numbers, minus 3, minus 16, minus 14. So again, we're just continuing on this. And so on the bottom, we still have 12. We haven't really done anything with that. But we're going to simplify the 9a minus 20a plus 4a. So if I 9a plus 4a gives me 13a. And 13a minus 20a gives me minus 7a. And now I just need to focus on my numbers. So minus 3 minus 16 gives me minus 19 and minus 19 minus 14 gives me minus 33 and I just checked that on my calculator. Okay so can we break this down any further? We actually can't. We've simplified as much as we can so when I expressed all of this the answer in its simplest form is minus 7a minus 33 all over 12. All right, our second example here is 4x minus 5x minus 1 divided by 4, so an algebraic fraction here, plus x divided by 12, so another algebraic fraction. Um, probably you remember in first year that if you had fractions and whole numbers or numbers that weren't fractions. It was probably easiest to turn them all to fractions. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And how I turn the four X to a fraction is I simply say four X over one. So I've turned that to a fraction, minus five X minus one over four plus X all over 12. And I follow my step one, which is to find a common denominator. Okay, so I am looking for a number that 1, 4, and 12 all go into, and they will all go into, the first number they will all go into is, of course, 12. So 1 times 12 goes into 12, 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 times 1 is 12. So, place my line on the bottom, I'm going to do this in black, actually, and I'm going to write 12 underneath, and then I follow the same process as I did earlier on. 1 goes into 12 12 times, so it is 12 times whatever was on top, which is 4x, and I'll keep that in brackets. Be sure to keep the next sign with you, which in this case is a minus, and we will then ask the question, how many times does 4 go into 12, and of course it is 3 times, and it's 3 times whatever was on top, which is... 5x minus 1. Be careful to bring the next sign with you, which is a plus. And I ask the question, how many times does 12 go into 12? The answer is once. And it's 1 times whatever was on top, which in this instance was x. Okay, so I've really done all the hard work at this point. Um, from now on, I follow on to step 2, which is to simplify out or to multiply out, get rid of the brackets, and then to group together. Okay, so along the bottom here, there's not much I can do. I just have the 12, so I will place that along the bottom here, and I'll start working out. Again, when you see brackets, you know that brackets means multiply, and so I have 12 multiplied by 4x here, and 12 times 4x will give me 48x. And then I move on and I have a minus times a plus, which gives me a minus. So I will have minus 3 times 5x, which is 15x. Let's do that in black. Moving on, I have minus 3 times minus 1. And a minus by a minus gives me a plus. 
and three times one is three. And the last one here, we have one multiplied by x gives me one x, or I can just write x. Okay, at this point here, then I have 48x minus 15x plus three plus x, and hopefully everybody's seeing here that we can tidy this up or gather up the like terms. Okay, so I am going to collect my x's first of all. So I've got 48x minus 15x plus x. So 48x minus 15x is 33x plus another x is 34x. So I will have 34x and then if I collect my numbers, I actually only have three, that's my only number. So it'll be 34x plus three all over 12. And I can't break that down any further. So I have simplified this whole expression here, 4x minus 5x minus one divided by four plus x divided by 12, all to be 34x plus three all over 12. Okay, so to finish off, you're gonna try one on your own. The learning check today is x plus four divided by two. So you've got a fraction, but you've also got your algebra. Minus x minus five divided by three, plus x all divided by six. So follow your steps. Step one, find your common denominator. Step two, work out your brackets, group your like terms and simplify. And I will see everybody tomorrow.